Hi friends, in this tutorial series, we will be implementing examples using Spring Boot and Kamunda. In this tutorial, we will be looking at what is Kamunda and implementing a Hello World example using Spring Boot and Kamunda. For this, I will be taking reference of my website javainews.com. So, go to the Spring Boot Kamunda tutorials page. Later, I will be adding more tutorials to this page. The tutorial that we will be implementing today is Spring Boot Kamunda Hello World example. In this tutorial, we will be implementing Spring Boot Kamunda BPM example. We will be looking at what is BPM and why we should be using it. Kamunda BPM, that is Business Process Management, it is a lightweight open source platform for workflow and process automation. So let us first have a look at what is BPM. BPM it stands for business process management. It is like creating a detailed recipe book for how a company it handles its day-to-day -day operations. Let us take an example of running the customer service department in a big retail store. So in this case we will be dealing with a lot of customer complaints every day and we will want to make sure that these complaints they are handled efficiently and consistently. So this is where BPM it comes into picture. With BPM, we can create a clear step-by-step -step process that everyone follows. For example, let us consider this workflow. So in this workflow, we receive the customer complaint. Once received, we log the complaint details. And then we analyze whether this complaint it has high severity or medium or low severity. If this complaint it has medium or low severity, then it is assigned to the customer service representative, who then investigates the issue. If the complaint it has high severity, then it is escalated to a senior manager who then investigates it. So based on the complaint severity, we can have either of these two flows and in both the cases, the complaint it is investigated and then a solution is proposed. If the customer is satisfied with the proposed resolution, then this resolution it is implemented and the complaint is closed. If not, then the complaint it is given back to the senior manager who then escalates it. So why should we use BPM instead of vanilla or plain code for development? So let us again consider this complaint resolution scenario. Now suppose instead of implementing this BPM workflow, we write plain Java or Spring Boot code to implement this workflow, then it will be very difficult for business analysts to understand what is going on and to give their inputs. So the most important advantage of using BPM is the visual representation of the entire workflow it offers. Both technical and non-technical stakeholders, they can better understand, give inputs and modify the BPM accordingly. So BPM, it helps bridge the gap between business needs and IT implementation. Business analysts and developers can better interact and implement the business requirements. So let us begin with the implementation part. We will first be downloading the Kamunda modeler. Using this modeler, we will be creating a Kamunda BPM and diagram. So here go to this Kamunda modeler page. Download this Kamunda modeler zip file for Windows. So here I have unzipped the Kamunda modeler zip file that we just downloaded. So double click on this Kamunda modeler exe. This will start the modeler and using this we will be creating our first BPM and diagram. Here yes, select BPM and diagram Kamunda platform. In Kamunda BPM, in this circle it represents the start event. From the start event, we want to perform a task. For this, select this rectangle. So this represents a task in Kamunda BPM. In. Next, from the start event, select this arrow. We'll be performing a task. Next, once this task is performed, we want to end the flow. For this, we'll be making use of this create end event. So again, select this task and this arrow. So here we have a start event. Then we are performing a task and then an end event. For this hello world example, we'll be creating a very simple task. So this task, it will just print some message to the console. So let us name this task as show message. Using the show message task, we'll be printing some message to the console and we'll be implementing this using JavaScript. For this, the show message task will define this as a script task. So for this, select the show message task. Click on this banner symbol here, select script task. So now this will be a script task and we can define some JavaScript for this. So when we select the script task, here you can see on the right hand side we have the properties panel and for this properties panel currently we have selected this task so this is the idea of the task i can name it as suppose task one and here in the script console i will be specifying the javascript that should be running for this task so we'll be writing a very simple javascript to print some message to the console if we now click somewhere outside this task, we see here we have the ID. Now this is the ID of this BPM and diagram and we'll be specifying this as Java news hyphen ID. Later we'll be making use of this Java news hyphen ID to load this BPM in in our Spring Boot application. So we are done with the changes for this BPM and diagram. Let us now save these changes. So I'll be saving this BPM in with the name Hello BPM in. Next let us begin with the Spring Boot implementation. So this is the flow that we'll be having in our Spring Boot application. So in the Spring Boot application, we'll be exposing a get endpoint using the REST controller. Inside this REST controller, we'll be interacting with the Kamunda process engine. In order for Java applications to interact with the Kamunda process engine, it provides with a public API. So using this public API, Java applications, they can interact with the Kamunda process engine. The Kamunda process engine, it has a BPM and 2 core engine. 
So this engine, it is responsible for passing the BPM and diagrams to core Java objects. So this BPM and core engine, it will execute the script task executor that we have created previously in the BPM and diagram. And this will print hello Java in use in our console. So let us implement this flow. For creating the Spring Boot project, we'll be making use of the Kamunda initializer. So this helps us create the Spring Boot project along with the Kamunda dependencies. So here in the Kamunda initializer page, let us first specify the groups. So group, I'll be giving it as founder Java in use artifact. PD, that is the name of the project. I'll be giving it like Java News Hyphen Kaminda. Hello world. Version, let us keep it as 7.21.0. I'll be keeping the same Spring Boot version. For the modules, we don't need the Web Apps module. Keep the REST API and Spin module. And here in the Spring Boot module, select Web. Click on Generate Project. So this will download the Maven zip file. So here I've imported the Java News Kaminda Hello World project that we just created. Go to the pom.xml. Let us have a look at the dependencies here. So here we have specified the Spring Boot dependency as 3.2.2 and also the Kamunda BOM that is Kamunda Bills of Material dependency as 7.21.0 If you look at the dependencies, here we first have the Kamunda BPM Spring Boot Starter REST dependency This dependency it is responsible for integrating the Kamunda process engine with the Spring Boot application Next we have the Kamunda engine plugin Spring dependency Using the Spring module we can process the various data formats like XML and JSON in a Spring Boot application Next, we have the Kamunda Spin Data Format All Dependency. So this dependency, it provides all the data format classes for the Spin module. Next, we have the Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency. So using the Spring Boot Starter Web Dependency, we can expose REST APIs for our Spring Boot application. Next, we have the H2 Dependency. So H2, it is an in-memory database. We'll be storing the information about the process flows, process instances in this H2 database. And finally, we have the Spring Boot Starter JDPC Dependency. So using this dependency, the Spring Boot application, it can connect to the H2 database. In this Spring Boot application, we'll be executing the JavaScript code that we have specified in the Kamunda script tasks. For this, we'll be specifying an additional dependency, Nashon Core in the pom.xml. So here, copy this dependency of Nashon Core in the pom.xml add this here. Next, let us build this project. So right-click on the pom.xml, run as Maven install. So this will download on the dependency that we have specified in the pom.xml. Here, the build is successful. In recent Kamunda versions, they have made it mandatory to specify the history time to live settings. So this setting, it determines how long the process instance data and variables they are retained in the S2 database before automatic deletion. So here we have specified this value as 8. It means that this data, it will live for 8 days before it is automatically deleted. So copy this property and go to source main resources, applications.yaml and paste it here. If you look here in the source main resources, by default, the Kamunda initializer, it provides a process.bpmn file. So delete this, we'll not be making use of this. Instead, previously we have created this hello bpmn. So copy this in the source main resources. Finally, in a Spring Boot application, we'll be creating a REST controller named test controller. So in this controller, we'll be exposing a get REST endpoint with the URL execute task. In this execute method, using the process engines.get default process engine method, we get the default process engine. So this process engine, it is the starting point for interacting with Kamunda BPMN. Once we get this process engine, then using this, we get the get runtime service and we create a new process instance by specifying the key of the BPMN diagram that we had created before. So in our case, this will be Java in use hyphen ID as this is the ID that we had specified for the hello BPMN that we just created. And finally, using the instance dot execute with variables in return, we start and execute this process instance. So this will execute the hello BPMN diagram that we had created previously and it will print hello Java in use to the console. For this get endpoint, we just return back executed Kamunda BPMN. So let us create this test controller. Now I'll be creating the test controller in com.java in use package. Copy the contents of this class. Copy the contents of this class. So we are done with the code changes. So in this hello BPMN, we have specified the BPMN ID as Java in use hyphen ID. So Change this here. Let us now start the Spring Boot project. Right click on application.java run as Java application. Okay, this will start the Spring Boot project. So here the application it has started successfully on port 8080. If you now go to localhost 8080 slash execute task. So here it is showing executed Kamunda BPML. Here we can see in the console hello java in use it is getting printed. So we had specified this as a javascript code in the script task of the BPMN diagram. So it is getting executed correctly. If you have understood this tutorial you can download this example from here. Thank you.